I've received a question on how to make a drill bit in a Libre, so let's jump in and do that. I'm going to create a sketch on my XY plane and create a circle. From here I'll add a dimension, give this a diameter of 0.25, and I can deactivate and extrude my sketch to, let's go with 6 inches. I'll make a sketch now on my ZX plane. And I'd like to uh, get the angle just right here. A common angle is 118 degree point angle. 135 is also pretty common. Uh, either way, I'll make a line that represents my axis here. That's vertical. And I'm going to go with 118 degree general use bits. So we're going to say 118 divided by 2. But again, you can also say 135 divided by 2, and that's also quite common. And there's some other specialized point angles, but... I think my 118 is going to be good. And then we'll give this a dimension here. Let's go with 0.25. With this fully defined, I'll do a revolve cut to make our point. And now we'll probably want to focus on our flutes or our cutting edges. I'm going to make a slot. Again, if you're using an earlier version of a Libre, you can also just go with arc, line, arc, line, and that comes up with uh, the same thing. But that's a nice little time saver. And then uh, we'll add a dimension. So that this line will sit above our origin and we'll go with a, we'll go with a distance of 0.2. Or I should say 0.02, I mean. We'll give this outer edge a distance. I'll go with 0.15. We'll make sure that this circle and line are tangent. Then we'll go 0.025 over here, right? So now we've got a cutting flute where that'll be our cutting edge. And again, adjust your cutting edge as needed, as your design requires. And we'll exit out of that sketch. Finally, I'll go with uh, a helix, and we're going to go with a subtractive helix right here. And for a reference line, I can simply choose this face, and now we're cutting in that flute. I want to give this a height of 4. I'll leave the pitch the same, because I don't think I need to uh, mess with it too much. And that will be our initial cut for our cutting edge. Now if I want to see what that looks like, because most drills have two flutes, or drill bits have two flutes, then I'll go with a circular feature pattern right here. We'll select this cut, and select the center. I'll move this down to two flutes, just like that. So that's looking more like a drill bit, but we might look at this transition and say that's an abrupt transition. Let's address that. Uh, I've seen a lot of drills where they seem to taper off. So I'll create a sketch on this face. And I'll simply project uh, this sketch here. And now I'll create another subtractive helix. We can choose this axis here. But this time I'll add a taper angle. Something like 5. Well, eight. Let's go with eight. Just like that, now we have more of a smooth, tapered ending that I think looks a little bit more like how drill bits look. I can go a little bit more if I wanted, and say maybe a 14 degree angle. Uh, and that's certainly an option. Yeah, so it depends on what you'd like to do. Maybe I'll st stick this down to 10. Now, I can do another circular pattern if I would like, but I can also take my feature pattern, move it down, and then edit my pattern and also pattern this transition so that both sides have it based off of one circular pattern. So I think this is most drill bits where you have the conical tip and uh, two flutes 
and then a little shank right there to connect it. But we would probably want to look at uh, making this a bit more advanced. What if you wanted to model a split point? Split points are ones that put cutting edges on the point that greatly reduce the initial pressure you need to create the hole. For that, I'll go onto this plane and uh, let's model and sketch out a nice profile for a cutting tip on our point here. We'll give that a vertical constraint and we'll give this a 40 degree angle I can make that probably as large as I want, right? So we'll go with 0.25. From here, I can create another plane and another sketch and do a subtractive loft to create that cutting point for really high dimensional accuracy if it is needed. I think in a lot of cases, it's gonna to suffice to do an extrude cut. And I'm gonna add a uh, draft angle on it there you can see the geometry of my split point change. Probably about right there is fine. And I once again can do my trick of moving my circular pattern feature down, editing it and adding in my cut that I just made to keep all of my patterns in one feature. And there I have some cutting points on the tip, as well as my two flutes and a tapered off section to transition into the shank. Uh, so I think that is gonna cover uh, most drill bit needs. I am assuming, of course, that if you uh, go ahead and make a drill bit, you know your design requirements and can model them accordingly using this or similar techniques. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.